Hello, my name is Lisa Shea, and now we're going to work on making string art, also called yarn art. This is a wonderfully mindful way to make floral designs. The pictures tend to come out looking like calla lilies or other kinds of flowers. So let's see what this is all about. I apologize for the video stutter that's going to happen here in a second, but you start with a roll of yarn or string or any other kind of thick kind of yarn string kind of substance. And what we're going to do is pull out this piece of yarn and be able to lay this on a piece of paper to be able to create an impression with it. So we'll go over that in much more detail. So draping it on a piece of paper and then pulling it out so that as the string pulls out of the paper, it makes a shape. So let me figure out where I put my scissors. Oh, look, I actually put them back in the scissor spot. Who would have thought? All right, so we'll cut a piece of string. I'll keep calling this string, but it's yarn, as you can see. Maybe if I put the yarn somewhere up here, the cats will not see it. This is all about cat manipulation. All right, piece of yarn. So we've got this tray over here of paints, and I'm just going to stick different parts of the yarn into different parts of the paint. This is a fairly paint intensive process. So this is why it's good to get the cheap paints from Walmart or somewhere like that. All right, let's stick it in there. So I'm trying to put different parts of the yarn into different colors. So we've got some in the purple, some in the blue, some in the yellow, and so on. And you want to leave the little end bit um, clean so that you have something to hold on to that you're not going to get your fingers very painty. But I will warn you that <laughs> can get things painty, so you should wear... Now, of course, I say this, I'm wearing my uh, butterfly shirt that I like a lot because it happened to be clean. But you should generally wear things that you don't mind getting some paint on because there is a reasonable chance that paint is going to end up on things while you're doing this. What a novel idea. I could have put a drop cloth down on my desk. That could have been a wise thing to do. Alright, so now you need a piece of paper that you're working with. And you need the top and bottom. So what I normally do is just rip it in half like this. And you can cut them in half if you're more picky about the edges. Alright, so we got the two pieces of paper. We've got our string. Paint on it. Right, we're going to be pulling out the bottom. So the string that's at the top is going to pull through and out the bottom. So we want it to be... Oh, I'm getting my lamp all painty. I want it to be fairly wide. Alright, so we'll say like this. Alright, so see how that's got the wide shape? When I pull on the string so that it starts sliding down. All of this is going to slide towards the middle. All of that's going to slide toward the middle. So all the arts outside pieces are going to be pulled in towards the middle and then come out the bottom because I'm pulling in a straight line out the bottom side of it and that'll cause the string to pull in. So we will do the top piece. All right, so we haven't moved the string once we laid it down. We just laid it down in a shape, and now we put the top piece on top of it. Now we want to put gentle pressure on it because we want to have the string with the paint touching both pieces of paper as it's getting pulled out. But we don't want to put super hard pressure on it because then it'll be really hard to get the string out of there. So we want gentle pressure, <laughs> gentle wide pressure. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking this is going to make a mess on the table. So hold on. 
Who'll be wise the way the Bob said to be wise? <laughs> Who would have thought that we should throw a little bit of wisdom here? All right, let me just move that over there for a second. Oh, I got this piece of paper. Bob's offering advice from the other room. Often involving things about not getting the office completely messy. Alright, there we go. Alright, this is just because <laughs> as I pull this through, this string is covered with paint and it's going to end up getting paint on stuff. Alright, so I'm pulling it. Usually I lay this at the end of a table, so the table ends there, so you're pulling it off into space, but then you wouldn't be able to see what was happening on the phone. So in this case, we're going to pull it off into the, the space. So gently press. This piece is cleaned down on your hand. All right, so now as I'm pulling it, you can see it's coming out straight line from the bottom, but all of those swirls are getting pulled in towards the center line of where I'm pulling. All right, can you imagine how that's happening in there? All those swirls are all getting pulled. And all that paint is coming off. All right, so this is where now I'm touching painted string. And you can see that this is a little painty, so. Now we're gonna peel this apart. And there you have it. So you have two nearly identical, but not exactly identical results. And where I had the string loop out wide, as that pulled in, it pulled in swirls of color. So each of those areas is an out loop of where the string was putting out. But all of it pulled in toward the middle as I pulled the string down out the bottom. So it naturally creates these swoopy areas. And the areas of light and dark are because my fingers were not pressing completely solid. And you want that kind of light and dark and the pressure of it. So you see how that kind of stuff happens? And again, this is the kind of thing that you can do with people of all different ages, all different levels, because all it involves is a piece of yarn and some acrylic paints. And you get to choose what colors are involved, but you're not really choosing. Although, you know, if I went this way with a piece that was blue, then I would have a good sense that this section over here is going to end up being blue. But you never quite know how the different sections are going to end up working out, because you, you can't be super scientific about the way that you're pulling a piece of string in there. The other thing is, because I went very wide edge to edge, my image ends up being very wide edge to edge. And if I actually wanted to mount this in a frame, I would now have problems with the mat getting close. So I recommend when you have a piece of paper that you make the yarn go more toward the center of it so that you have room around the edge to be able to mat your picture. Because when you display this, you wouldn't want this right up against the glass because it could get stuck to the glass. You want to mat around the edge. So that, you know, just like with a photo or with a pastel or other kinds of things that you would display, you never want anything touching straight against the glass of the frame. You always want a mat around the edge. And if you need a mat, then <laughs> you want some space in there for the mat to hold the paper without the image itself being covered up by the mat. So let's try this again. And let's put this over here so that people can see what we're doing. So we call this string art. String art that involves like actually taking string and winding it around and making the There are different things in the world that are called string art. All right, so I like, as you have seen, <laughs> purples and blues. So those are the colors that I tend to work with. But if you would rather make yellow flowers or orange flowers or red flowers, whatever you want, it is up to you what colors you choose. Eating some vitamin C tablets. All right. Do 
You can reuse the same piece of string if you want because we got most of the paint off of the previous one. And it doesn't really matter if it gets more blue or whatever. Now that being said, if you were doing lots of blue flowers and then switched over to yellow flowers, I'd probably switch to a clean piece of string so that you did not mix colors in, that you did not intend to mix in. But we got some blue. So here I'll put this a little forward in case you're curious what I'm actually doing. I'm using a brush to squish the yarn down into the little paint areas. So we've got some in the purple. There's a little bit of black in there. Some in the green. And if you want to try to control what parts of the image get what parts, I'm down by the finger end, so this is the bottom of the picture, and I'm putting green down in this bottom area. And I'm putting purple and blue in the top areas. So we'll see what happens. But it should be that the top area gets purple and blue in it. And then it gets green. But I mean it's still worth noting that if you have purple up here. And then you drag it down. The whole thing is going to end up having purple. So it's not like this will be only green. This will also have blue and purple from the top dragging part. And I also want to comment as it's 12.20. That at 1 p.m. I am going to stop this feed and then Laura Senadella is going to have a feed running on her Laura O. Senadella page on Facebook. So I'll paste, post a link on the BVAA page so you can easily find it. But you'll want to go over to her Laura O. Senadella and you can just search for Laura O. Senadella to be able to find the page. And you'll be able to see she's going to help us paint a lighthouse so I'm very looking forward to that. She does it with oil paints I believe is what she's going to do but I'm going to paint along with For some reason, the fumes of oil paints really get to me. And even just sitting here over the acrylic paint for all this length of time, acrylic paints <laughs> aren't great for my stomach, so. We all have to do what we can. All right, so I'm getting a piece of paper. All right, so this time I'm gonna take a bigger piece of paper and I'm gonna fold this in half. So I fold it in half, and then I'm just gonna. Oh, I'll be good. I'll, I will cut it down the middle. I pretty much never cut it. I pretty much always rip it. But just for you guys, I will cut it down the middle. So I've cut it into two halves. Alright, I'm going to pull this back out of the way. Now we'll put it over there so that we have more pulling ability. Alright, put down the bottom piece. Pick up the string by the end part, which has not got any paint on it. And now light a little so I don't hit the light this time. Now we want to start wide at the top but we want to leave space on the sides for the mat so that when we have this beautiful framed image we do not cut off pieces of artwork. Alright so again if you look at the one that we made before the wide part at the top is going to allow this kind of stuff to happen to go wide and then it'll all pull down towards the center anyway because we're going to be pulling the string which will suck all the string in yarn towards the center point so it'll naturally all get drawn in through this middle section and in case you can't see it I've got purple over here I've got blue over there with some purple and then some little bit of black and then some green and it's also worth noting <laughs> that the paint is drying while we're chatting. So if I just did this all reasonably quickly, I could probably get more paint to come onto the paper. But because I'm spending the time discussing what we're doing, the paint is sitting there drying. So at, when I do the drawing part, there will be less paint that transfers onto the paper. But that's okay for our purposes here. 
All right, so now we put a second piece of paper on top. The string is all curled up in the middle. I'm going to put my hand down gently, but with enough pressure to cause the string to drag against the paper while I'm pulling it out. We've got the little tail end of the string under there. All right, you see the tail end of the string? All right. But reasonably firmly, we're going to pull out. We want all that paint that we put on the yarn. Oh, hold on. This is a video interrupted. Where is it back? Waiting for the video. I can't see what my phone is doing. Well, hopefully it'll be back soon. Pulling slowly. Oh, I'm a little nervous that this video hasn't started up again. What are you doing, video? Well, it says it's live. Well, I don't know. I will keep going and hope that it wakes up. Now you'll see as I get down, my fingers are getting paint because I'm now down to the sections that had paint. So you are going to get some paint on your fingers. So all the string is out. I will get a little bit of the paint off my fingers. Carefully peel apart. Pieces. And there we go. So see it does all these little curly things. And I love the different shades that are in there. Let's see if I hold one up so you can see more clearly. Can you see that? All the different streaks of blue and purple that are in there different streaks so part of why this has blue and purple is because I'm using my palette has all the colors with different um, colors mixed together if I wanted it just to be blue then I could certainly make it just blue it's doing that because I'm doing that on purpose on my palette but see how it has like the light purple and the dark purple and then see how the green layer down here where I had the green almost ends up looking like leaves but again, it's not going to be just green at the bottom because at some point this string up here that had the blue color on it has to get pulled down on its way out of the, the project. So there is going to be some blue down there and some purple, but because we put green on that middle layer, the green ended up getting pulled out and creates this nice leaf effect out of it. And the thickness or thinness of this depends how straight you pull the string. If you're able to pull the string exactly in a straight line, then you can end up getting just one thin stalk down here, if that matters to you. Okay, so I really like the dark purple up here. I like the little curls of the petals. And all of that is just happening naturally with the string. This one here ended up being fairly light. So again, that could have to do with how much paint I put on there or how long I waited before I started pulling it. But all in all, I think that that is a pretty result. We had someone who did string art with us on a Saturday who entered a show with their string art and they won a ribbon, so judges think that this is very pretty. All right, so both of those that I did were fairly wide because that's the way that I like to do it. But let's try doing one which is more narrow. And let's try doing one that is primarily just purple and green, which means I think we need a little more green. Now, of course I say that, but I just put my yarn down. Well, I suppose I could get a fresh piece of yarn. Oh, the amazing powers we have here. Right, so put the old used piece of yarn over here. All right, get a fresh piece of yarn. Fresh piece of yarn, scissors. All right, so I got a nice clean piece of yarn. All right, 
gonna need some green. Guys, feel free to ask if you have any questions. Alright, we got some green. Alright, so my aim is to have purple at the top and then green at the bottom. So if I find the end I'm going to be holding, this is the top end. I'm going to put that end into the purple. So I'm aiming for a purple top. Now this brush is, I mean, it's just using the same brush, so undoubtedly there's some green on there. <laughs> so there'll be a little bit of green on the top of this flower, but that's okay. Come on, go in the purple. Let go of the brush. So this is also a great way, if you're doing any sort of project with acrylic paint, and, and have paint on your palette or whatever you're using, and don't want to waste it, you might as well just squish some yarn around in it and make some string art with whatever is left. Because it'll be quick and easy, it'll use up all the extra paint, and it will make pretty designs. Alright, come on. And the green. And the green. Alright, so I got the bottom part in the green paint, got the top part in the purple paint. Alright, let me get some paper. Got my piece of paper, I'm gonna fold it in half. Fold it in half. I'm going to cut it in half. So now I've got two pieces of paper. <laughs> I'm going to move some of my string art. And I will leave that one over there, I suppose, and we'll move this one. Out of the way. Oh, I'm running out of places to put art down. I'll put it over there for now. Alright, so we'll put this over here. We'll put the bottom piece right there. So now we're going to do a reasonably narrow one. Part of the problem is, you know, if I could just grab that bottom piece, it wouldn't be swirling like this. I'm not doing that on purpose. My hand is just shaky. And I want to get this somewhere where I want it, but I don't want to touch that because it's all full of paint. If we do that. I don't see my other hand is shaky, so there we go. All right, so this time we're going to go reasonably narrow. to make a different kind of design. All right, so in the previous ones, I went very wide side to side. To create these long swooping things. This time I went very narrow and I just have purple on the top. Now I probably went too close to the top because again, I want to leave space left to right but I went too close to the top in terms of having a mat to be able to mat around the edge of it and keep the artwork safe from the piece of glass that's going to come on top. So keep that in mind when you're working on your own pieces. So we put the top piece down on the top. Put the hand down, leave some space between the fingers and press Gently but firmly. You want the string to be able to come out <laughs> and you're trying to get to make sure the paint comes off the string and presses on the paper. And again, the straighter that you can pull this, there's always going to be a little bit of wiggle on it. Pull it in here. Let me put seal guy 
Because right now there's nothing pressing down there to make this demination dark, so we'll put Seal Guy there. And he'll help me put a little pressure on the bottom. Right. Just pulling slowly, but gently. I'm getting to the paint parts of the yarn, so my fingers are getting painty. Alright, so the yarn is all out. I'm going to get some paper towels to get my fingers unpainty. On one hand, I don't tend to care about having paint on my fingers while I'm working on things, but on the other hand, when we open it up, I sometimes get fingerprints on the edge of the art which isn't exactly the look I'm hoping for, so put a little seal guy back. Alright, so there we have that style. So see how the top of these is much narrower, narrower? than the previous ones, which were bigger and showier. So we made a more delicate kind of, kind of flower by having the art kept in here when we were making our yarn. I made the top area of it just purple, and then I made the lower area green. But again, like I said, it's not like the lower area will not have purple in it because that purple string has to pull down through this middle as it's coming out. So there is going to still be purple on there I don't think it detracts from the image. Let's see if I can hold this up here so you can see it a little better with the different kinds of textures and stuff are in there. So it, there's an actual texture, sorry my hands are shaky, it's an actual texture to those lines. There's thicker paint areas and thinner paint areas. And see, I, I want to be careful so I don't get fingerprints on it, which is why you uh, want to clean your fingers off before you start handling it. But I think that is quite lovely. I like the way that the lines come through and the purple comes through against the green. I just like these images a whole lot in general. So again, like the jelly prints, these are mindful Zen types of activities because you can't really control how this image is going to come out. You can't control exactly where the darker areas are and the lighter areas are going to be. And you have a sense of the colors because you're the one who's putting the string in different areas. So you know that the top will be purple and the bottom will be green. But you don't have a lot of control over exactly how this end product's going to be. So it helps you release expectations and say, well, I'm going to give this a try. And because it's fairly quick and easy, if one comes out the way that you hadn't quite intended, then you can try another one. It's not a long loss of time or a long loss of uh, supplies. You know, you can get a long thing of yarn. You can get big tubs of acrylic paints for a reasonable little amount of money. I'm uh, impressed the cats have not come over and attacked me yet. I thought one of them was making a noise, but nope, they seem to be uh, calm and collected. So that's a very good thing as well. All right, and we've been doing them with flower-like colors, reasonably flower-like colors, the purples and the greens and stuff. But you can use whatever colors you want to, of course, since you have complete control over this. So something I enjoy doing is just doing a monochrome black and white one. So let's find my black paint. Here we go. All right, so we got some black paint. I will get a fresh stretch of yarn so that I'm reasonably sure not to get a lot of other colors into it. Hmm, somehow I have lost the end of... are you an end? Ha! I found the end. Excuse me. Found the end of the yarn. Alright. 
So I have fresh yarn, nice and clean. I'll put the old yarn over here. All right, I have a little blotch of black paint. Alright, so let's see, let me get another paintbrush so I'm not touching it with paint other than black. Right. So a nice clean paintbrush. Got nice clean yarn. Now, of course, this black is surrounded by other colors, so it could very easily have little bits of purple or blue or stuff end up in it, but we'll get the general sense of this. So, black into our yarn. Sing the Black Hole Sun song. Or not, you probably don't want to hear me sing. Hope you guys are all having a lovely Saturday. Hope you are painting or sketching or enjoying your creativity. I think it's good to set aside time to just relax and de-stress. See what you can create in the world. Come on. Alright, All right, I'll put these flowers away so they can dry. Alright, so we got another piece of paper. half. There we go. We have cut it in half. Put the first piece down. Do a little wide, but I'll try to leave a margin. There we go. Try to leave space on all the sides so that we can map this. Only black paint on the piece of yarn. I'll put the second piece of paper on the top. Put the hand down with fingers spread gently but firmly on the top. And then again, see those were light because I didn't have a hand down here, so I'm going to put my little seal down to try to put a little pressure on that bottom area. And then we carefully pull. If you press down too hard, then you're unable to pull. I'm trying to see if I can pull it all without having to touch the paper. Ha! Huh, and I did it. All right, so that time I just pulled it all holding the non-paint part of the yarn. I had enough space to be able to keep pulling it out without having to touch the part that got painty. Alright, so let us see what this looks like. Oh, I actually 
stuck a little too much. Alright, so that is the monochrome flower. That is just black and white. Alright, got a little splotchy that is probably where my heel of my hand was sitting. So I have to be careful about not sitting as much pressure down at the heel of my hand when I'm and actually you can see it there too, so that's probably where the, the bottom of my hand was sitting and holding and creating this area that caught all the paint. Let's take a look at the other one. All right, and this one, it's not as blocky there, so I probably wasn't pressing down quite as hard. But I think that I need to press more evenly and gently so that it doesn't press the uh, squarish area where the heel of my hand is. But other than that, you can see the swirls that I created with the string and how they create the flower petals for it, sort of like a calla lily. And monochrome versions are pretty too, so some people like the monochrome kind of style of it, some people like the colored style of it. So we've got a multicolored style, we've got a monochrome style, and then we've got this one, which is more, well, it's still pretty monochrome, or uh, pr still pretty uh, multicolored, the purple and the blue, and then the green down below. Where'd the other one go? Right, here we go. Well, I know I did one just with purple. Alright, so and then there's the one that's just purple and green, to show how just two colors will come together. Oh, and there too. You can see that's probably where I put the heel of my hand caused that ridge there. Yeah, so the way that you put pressure on things also has an impact on where the color ends up bulking up because as you're pulling the string down, the color ends up getting stuck in essence on the heel of my hand and came out thicker there. So, so it's good to consider. Yeah, 12.45. We have 15 minutes left. I suppose I can do one more of these. And then what I should do is I should get a Sharpie and say, oh, can you see that? I bet you can see that. Laura O O Sen Gala One, two, three, um, there we go. So you can start thinking about the coming up next. And that'll be at her Laura O. Sinadella page on Facebook. And I'll put a link on the BVAA page so you can find it easily from there. And you will watch and see how to do a lighthouse and again these things are all going to get saved as videos after we do them so you could always watch her the first pass through and see how she does it and what she does and everything and then you could re-watch the video when you're ready to actually paint it yourself and follow through the steps and that way that you can uh, get a sense of what you need and how you're going to progress or you can paint along with her which is what i'm going to try to do you know you see what happens I am not, as you can see, <laughs> the world's greatest figurative painter, but it is fun to practice and try things. It's all about learning and exploring your opportunities. All right, so let's do one more since I've got this paint left to use. And I imagine she's not going to do a lighthouse in the colors of purple and green. So we're going to move my monochrome ones out of the way. I'm running out of places to put drying paints. I have found a spot. Alright, so we'll take our string back. We'll put that up there for now. So that we yeah, sit down. <sighs> One last string.
So what colors do I have? Well, I don't count these big blocky things. <laughs> so we've got green, which I'll put at the bottom of it. And then we've got some purple, some blue, and some black. Right. You generally don't want to like mix all the colors together because then you'll just end up with a grayish mud. So you want to try to like put it into the blue first. Try to get all the rest of the blue paint up because you might as well make use of it. Every last bit of blue paint. And plus, the thicker that you goop it on, the thicker that the paint lines end up being. And I like that. I like those textures of it. I mean, conversely, if you want a thin ethereal look, then you could put very light amounts of paint and then use very light amounts of pressure on your hands when you're holding it. So these are all different aspects that you can attempt this with. All right, so I got it in the blue. We'll go right to the black next. Try to swoop up all the rest of the black paint so I don't waste any. There's white over here, but I think this is all probably dried. That is still left over from the jelly print stuff, but we'll put it in there. You never know. Some of it will be useful. I hate wasting paint. So I might as well put it on there and see what happens. Alright, black. Next, we're going to get all the purple that's left. This is called reusing every last bit of paint you've got. Alright, got all the purple on there. Hello kitten. You have been such a good kitten. You are such a good kitten. Kittens resisted the call of the yarn somehow. I would not have thought it possible that we could do a full hour of yarn activity without the kittens being climbing all over me. But they have been so good and well behaved. Not to having all the humans around all the time. Alright, there we go. Alright, I think we got all the paint that was left on the palette. And this palette I'm using is just a takeout lid, so you don't need anything special to mix your paints on. You can use any random piece around the house. All right, now let me get the paper. So I got a piece of paper. Fold the paper in half. Paper is folded in half. Paper is cut into two halves. Put the first one down there. of oil paints getting to me. Normally I don't have a problem with acrylic paints, but I've had my face stuffed in this palette pretty closely for three hours and I'm starting to feel as if that is plenty of time for my stomach. All right, so we're going to go back and forth and down. So this is our use up all the extra paint, although there is more after this. All right. This time I'm not going to press down with the heel <laughs> of my hand so that I don't create that. Well, we'll see if it doesn't create that lump, but trying to press down gently but evenly. We'll see how it works. Alright, 
so I put on a ton of paint this time because I was trying to use up the extra paint amounts and you can see how thickly it came out in the flower so and I also did it very up high so that ended up a with a flower where a lot of the detail is up on the upper area so you can see when you put less paint on it creates a lot of space if you put more paint on it creates a thicker effect so it's all what you're after what you want to do and you can see in all of them how the two halves of it are uh, never quite the same there's always some sort of difference between them So this is how string art works, or yarn art. All you need is a piece of yarn, some acrylic paints, and two pieces of paper that you can create the two halves of the image with. What you do is you put acrylic paint onto your yarn in any way that you want. You swirl the yarn onto the piece of paper, and then you create a sandwich with the second piece of paper, and then you pull the yarn through. And as you're pulling the yarn through, it makes these different kinds of shapes for you. All right, it is 12.54, so I am going to shut down this feed, and I encourage everyone to go over to the Laura, oh wait, I wrote it down, the Laura O. Senadella. there we go, the Laura O. Senadella Facebook page, you can search on Laura O. Senadella to find her Facebook page. And starting at 1 p.m., she is going to have a how-to video on how to paint a lighthouse. And even if you're not interested in painting a lighthouse, come along and join with us anyway, because that way you can watch what she's doing and you can chat. And if you want to do watercolors or something else, that's fine. We don't mind. It's just fun to share our activities together and to be creative. So have a great day. This video will be saved, so you can re-watch it whenever you want to, to get a sense of how it works and ask with any questions. And you can see us on Facebook, or you can visit us at our bvaa.org site, the Blackstone Valley Art Association. And I am Lisa Shea, the president. So have a great weekend.